Now, one of the other things I wanted to touch on, you guys speak to a lot of entrepreneurs and you're both entrepreneurs yourself. Can we speak to failure being part of the process? Mm -hmm. Because everyone thinks that this is going to be an easy road and it ain't. It's not, man, it's, it's not. And it's a, it's a quote that helped me always stick with it. Cause like, you going to go through some L's, you going to take some tough L's. It's going to always be some shit that's going to be like, man, dang, like I thought it was going to go this way, but it's not. But like with every defeat comes the, the equal opportunity, like for a greater success. Like each time you go through something in entrepreneurship, like it's going to help you get to that next level. Like with us. We initially, we came into this thing. I think our biggest mistake was that we came in, this was a passion project. This was not a business. So like we came through and we didn't monetize ourselves effectively through the initial portions of this. We didn't even have a business plan. We didn't have a business plan. Like we just were doing this out of what we could, out of what we know, out of what we could do, just sharing information. And that ends up, ended up biting us. But what it was able to do was like, because you can look at it and you can look at it two ways. You can look like, dang, we messed up. We didn't do it right from the start. Uh, We not going, we lost all, we missed out on all this money, all this opportunity. Or we could look at it as like, okay, this is what we hadn't been doing. This is what we need to do now so that we can start to start seeing the trajectory we want to see. And as we started doing that, looking at the things that you you learn in failure, the things that you've seen like, oh, this didn't work, that didn't work. Let me change this, let me change that. You start seeing that upward trajectory. It starts going from being that $5,000 to that $10,000, that $10,000 to that $20,000 and so on and so forth, as long as you just continue to learn from your mistakes. Because we all got to make mistakes, honestly. Hmm. And Correct. I kind of want to piggyback off of just the whole failure thing too, because I recently put a post up on my personal page about you know failure. And what I said was, I know failure is my admission to success. You must go through failure in order to be admitted to success. And whenever you think about bodybuilders or you think about anyone training, weight training, what do they do to their muscles? They train until it fails, until you can't go anymore. Because guess what? Once you fail and that muscle breaks down, it comes back a whole lot stronger. Even with a broken bone, you break a bone, they said that part that it heals, that's stronger than the other part of the bone. So even a part of pledging and becoming a part of a fraternity, they, they say we must break you down to build you back up again. Same thing with the military. We must break you down to build you back up again. And I feel like with anything, you must be broken down. You must have some type of failure to really approach appreciate the success too. Because if you just get some success, quick success, overnight success, you're not going to appreciate it. You're And you're also not going to know what it truly took to get there. Because guess what? You got lucky. You got lucky. So now you don't know if I do this thing wrong, this is what's going to happen. But once you start to experience that failure, now you know, okay, this doesn't work right. This is the correct way to do it. Okay, I just fi- I just figured out another way to do it properly because the other way that I tried didn't work. So now you're able to start gaining experience. Experience also comes from failure. Once you start taking those hits on the chin, and uh, I want to talk to one of the event that we had around December last year. We were hosting our first event by ourselves, and this was in New Orleans. And uh, our ticket sales weren't wasn't going the way that we wanted to. And we were kind of afraid because some things like it, the, the way that we wanted the event and envisioned the event to go, it, everything wasn't going the right way. The we weren't, we weren't help, happy with the location. Uh, people weren't signing up and we were this close to canceling the event because one of our members said, well, they, we we're just like, man, we don't want to look bad in front of people. And then I think it was David. David was like, nah, this makes me remember, reminds me of like the Kanye West Yeezy, uh, like him launching his clothing line. There was nobody there at the first show, but he said, this is good. This is good because now we know it's only up from here. And that was something that I think Jared was saying. He was like, man, I don't want to look like a failure in front of all these people. But I feel like 
This is good whenever you fail in front of people because guess what? You're able to show humility and you're able to show the, how what your true character is because I feel like your character is based on how you get up after you're knocked down, not how you celebrate at the championship. You're touching on so many great points. I'm sitting here and I'm just smiling as I'm listening to you. And, you know, I spent many years of my career in the music industry. And prior to being in the music industry, I was a party promoter. And just sticking with the mindset of an entrepreneur for, for, for a brief second, I remember promoting parties and having that same mentality. You know, you don't want to promote the party that five people show up to. Mm -hmm. And then later in my career, I created the Global Spin Awards. And it was that same mindset is like, damn, you know, I'm, I'm creating this huge event and I don't want to fail publicly. I don't want an empty house. If the house is packed and we don't have our stuff together, people could see us just catching the biggest L mm -hmm. in real time. And sticking to the mindset of an entrepreneur, can you guys just stay on this topic for because it really comes down to daring to be great. You have to be willing to jump out there and catch a public beatdown, catch the L of your life while people are watching. But if you dare to be great, on the other side of that, you might just become great. In my case, Yes, I took some public L's, but I learned from them. And the next time I went out, we were more prepared. We were more equipped. But I would not have become the person that I have become if I didn't dare to be great. Can you speak to that for a second? I really feel like just with daring to be great is it was really a test of your faith and your belief in yourself. Like, we all go through things we all gonna have these challenges as entrepreneurs like like you said you gonna take a l publicly but you gotta have the ability the discernment like the faith just to understand that this is not it this not gonna be the last thing like this there's always tomorrow there's always the next day as long as i can wake up i can make this happen that's like you gotta have that never say die mentality you can't just be like we spoke on earlier you can't be weak-minded you can't be like let yourself be defeated. You can't, one thing I'm really, I really big on uh, getting against is self victimization. A lot of people, that's why I feel like not many people can maintain this entrepreneurial mindset. We get around a bunch of different people. We start getting these beliefs about ourselves that, oh, I can't do this and I can't do that. I won't do this and I won't do that. But it's like, if you want to be great and you want to really expand and grow, you're going to have to change your narrative around yourself. You can't, be a person who thinks the world is out to get you. You got to be the person that puts yourself in the position of power. You can't be a reactive person. You got to be a proactive person if you want to actually do something. Because whenever you react, if you operating like on like your primary nervous system, some primitive stuff here, like you over here, you just you just going with the flow. You just letting everything else determine what you can do whenever you in all reality can determine what you can do if you just sit there and think about it and actually think about what you're saying about yourself, thinking about how you talking like around yourself. I'm real big on self-talk. Mm. And I want to piggyback off of that too, about just daring to be great. I think it's the same thing. Like you're saying, you got to fail on a large stage. If you really want to be great, you have to go big or go home. Great people don't come from doing mediocre tasks. Like you have to do something that's above the ordinary. Even with us, with creating Black Wealth Renaissance, one of the first like entrepreneurs in the family who was doing doing this, like I have a college degree, and my people are like, you know, why are you not using that? Why are you not doing this? Because you don't understand the impact that we're having on these other people. So I know I went to school for this, but that's not what God placed in my life. Mm -hmm. I have to be great and I have to be different. So even like you said, with us failing on a larger stage, that's another reason why we were kind of scared of the event because at that time we had 
200,000 eyeballs on us on our page. So why would we want to fail in front of those people? But at the same time, once again, it's a humbling experience. And I want to bring it back to sports. Even with LeBron James, the man has been to the finals 10, 11 times. He's only won four of them, but he's still regarded as one of the greatest to ever play this game. And guess what? Anytime he has a terrible night, they're criticizing him, killing him, slaughtering him all over the media. But guess what he does? He puts the chip on his shoulder and he comes back and he shows you, this is why I am regarded as one of the greatest people to play this sport. This is why I can be so dominant. I can take over the game. So I feel like with, with us chasing greatness, you have to have that same mentality. Even with Michael Jordan, he said, you can't be afraid to take the last minute shot. You didn't practice enough. So you obviously didn't prepare enough if you felt like you were afraid for it. So you obviously knew that you already placed the, the seed of defeat in your mind. If you have the, the I don't care, I'm going to be confident. Even if this event said, and I'm going to speak to Donald Trump, Donald Trump, I don't care if you love him or hate him. Anytime he ever talks about his personal self and things regarding him, it's the greatest ever. He had a damn rally that had little to no people. This is the hugest rally we ever had because (laughs) guess what? He's not placing limitations or defeat on himself. He's going to keep on pushing it and he's going to keep on looking forward. And you have to be that same way with anything that you're doing. Anytime that you're trying to strive, anytime that you're succeeding, even if you lose, you have to feel this is the biggest loss I've ever had. Let me go back to the drawing board and make it the biggest win I've ever had. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.